The services side of the podcast industry needs new thinking, and Dan Benjamin is doing just that. It's the Podcast Report, episode 118, show notes, links, conversation, and more at thepodcastreport.com forward slash 118. We are getting there. Libsyn just launched their new web page builder that is definitely a step in the right direction. Apple announced that they are quote unquote working on new features for podcasts. It may be a decade too late on this, but this is happening. I've got links to both of these issues at the show notes for this episode, thepodcastreport.com forward slash 118. If you look at the hosting platforms, and I've never meant this show to be a hosting platform or microphone or technology shootout, but the hosting platforms, that's part of the game. That's part of what we have to do in the business of podcasting. The hosting platforms and services, they seem to offer different bits and pieces, um, different things that we want. I like this from this and this from that, but they all kind of have this old paradigm. The new paradigm that I'm introducing in today's episode is, um, well, new, and it's from a podcaster that I respect. See, it's not someone who's jumped into the industry without an understanding of the industry and says, I'm going to make some money by providing from services. This is a podcaster who's been podcasting for the decade who realizes that we need some new things and actually went out and built it. Now, at the same time, I do get frustrated, really frustrated with those in the podcasting space who assume that all podcasters are nerds that enjoy WordPress plugins and enjoy XML schemas and that kind of thing. Don't worry, that's not today's interview either. Is Dan platform everyone? No, but he's thinking outside of the box, which I really appreciate. And what he's got is some nice features and some things to think about and things that not only you should consider, but the other hosts should consider as well. This interview gives you a peek into the other side of podcast creation that is definitely worth your time. Now, again, I don't want this to be a hosting platform shootout or microphone shootout or anything like that. This is a look at someone seriously thinking outside of the box, and I could not be more thrilled to give it to you today. This episode is brought to you by Dial Talk Done. Who else wants podcasting as easy as Dial Talk Done? Get on the early access list by visiting dialtalkdone.com today or texting Dial Talk Done, all one word, to 678 506 7543. The phone number and the link will be in the show notes. You can check it out on your podcatcher, or obviously everything is at thepodcastreport.com forward slash 118. Today's interview is with Dan Benjamin from Fireside.fm, a new podcast hosting company. You'll notice in the first part of this interview, he was a bit surprised because I did not introduce him as Dan Benjamin of The Podcast Method. The Podcast Method is a great show, and I will definitely link to it in the show notes for this episode. But Dan has been doing a show for a while called Back to Work that, to me, is the epitome of the power of podcasting. It is one of the shows that I just don't miss any given week. There are a lot of podcasts out there that all pick based on who the interviewee is or who the topic is, but there's something special at Back to Work. And by not missing any episode of Back to Work, I've gotten to know Dan. Um, it's one of the powers of podcasting. I've got to know who he is, what he represents. And when he announced that he was launching a new podcast platform, I knew it would be interesting. I've got links to both of his shows at thepodcastreport.com forward slash 118. Now, he's created a podcasting platform for podcasters. And having been a podcaster for so long and being a nerd for so long and being in computers for so long, he has a unique angle worth considering and examining, even if you never jump onto his platform. It's an interesting machine. I've poked around it. I played with it. I did an import from Libsyn. Everything's pretty seamless. And if you wanted to play a try, there's a seven-day trial that you can do without, you know, paying him anything. At the end, he does give a discount code for anyone who wants to try it. This is not a recommendation. This is just an opportunity for you. Dan did a great job of repping the service, what it brings to the game. I asked some questions. He definitely says what it is, what it isn't. But more importantly than a checklist of features is a guy who has responded to what podcasting means, what podcasting represents, and built a service around it. We have a lot to learn from that. I want to end this episode on the last words of Dan because they're good. So I want to encourage you, if you want to reach out, I am at social, thepodcastreport.com slash Twitter, thepodcastreport.com slash Facebook, all the good ones. If you'd like to subscribe to the show, would love to have you get every episode when it comes out, thepodcastreport.com slash iTunes, thepodcastreport.com slash Stitcher, etc. Hey, Paul, if there's one of those links you didn't mention, our chance is good that it's there. Yes, it is. This is the Podcast Report, and I've got Dan Benjamin on the line, so let's get to it. Dan, how are you doing today, sir? 
Hey, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I've got Dan Benjamin from Back to Work on the line, man. I'm, I'm a big fan of his. I, I like what he's done both in show and in tech, and now I get to ask him a couple of questions. So it's a good day for me. Hope it's a good day for you. Back to Work. Oh, you, yeah. You know, I've never been introduced as Dan Benjamin from Back to Work before. I kind of like it. <laughs> Well, I speak to Back to Work a lot uh, because one of the things that I, I like about Back to Work is is Back to Work is one of, as I truly believe, it, it, it's a true podcast. You know, it, it wouldn't work as a radio show. It wouldn't work as a CD of the Month Club. Right, right. Uh, um, the continuity is there. You know, there are some shows where the bantering before the content is just annoying. You know, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm hitting the the skip one minute, skip one minute, skip one minute. There are some right. shows that I look at the, uh, you know, I look at the description and decide whether or not I want to listen to this one. But I can honestly say I haven't missed a show. And well, that's really nice to say. Some are better than others, but that's life, you know, and that's kind of what the show's about, you know. <laughs> sometimes you get it out of the park, sometimes you don't, and it, and it's been it's been a fun little journey, and um, you know, so you've done that, you've produced a great show. Um, Ringling in Merlin, I think, is probably just a great feat of psychological mastery. I'm not quite sure how you pulled <laughs> right. that off. But but what's interesting is not only have you pulled off this great show, but you've also got the 5x5 five five network, which is in some ways a computer nerd network like there are about 1,800 of them. But there's somehow a level of professionalism. There's somehow a level of um, quality there's somehow a level of uh, stick to itness that I don't see in a lot of the others. You know, I sleep on a Casper mattress because nice. you know, your show mentioned it and I'm happy with it. And, you know, I have bought products and services. I've examined products and services, you know, whereas all these other sites make, you know, I've been an audible member for longer than you've been alive, kid. You, you, you know, this one isn't going to matter or this or this, but you know, I, I've tried this stuff because of what you've done. Your, your system works. And I've jumped over to quit and I've jumped over to a couple other shows. You know, Roderick, I think is the, uh, Roderick, I think is, is today's modern philosopher King. So I'll, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> I'll take him when I can. Uh, but, but, but not every week. It's just, it's, it's just too much for me, but so you got the five by five network and you've shared over the years, glimpses of offices and technology and learning. You dipped your, your toe into the video podcasting water for a while. You've done these different things. And in the back of my mind for the last several years, and it has been several years with you guys. You've been chatting about this thing you're going to build, this this podcast network you're going to build, and you know you're going to open it up to the public. And right. um, I was excited by that. And I've got some some issues with people who build new tech for podcasting because a we need it, we need it badly. We are um, we're still running on tech that's ten years old in 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 many ways, and and that's just not good for anybody. You know, imagine if we were still on our iPhone ones. You know, but unfortunately, a lot of the people who build the tech tend to have no idea what tech they're building. You know, I talked to the CEO of a company, Dan, highlighted by TechCrunch, right. who asked me, and I quote, and by the way, he was mentioned in TechCrunch as a podcasting company. He asked me, well, how really important is an iTunes feed? Oh, wow. You know? Really? Yes. Um we were both. Oh my gosh! Did you just end the interview and? <laughs> well, leave? it wasn't an interview. It, it was more. I'd actually said something about him on an episode, and hmm. he'd followed up, and I kind of suggested that maybe they had no clue. And, and and the thing was, I appreciated his earnestness in calling me and following up, but just the fact that you launch a company with the word podcast, and you're not quite sure what role iTunes plays into it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That, that terrifies me. I was at an industry event. You were at the same event. There was a company that was selling an all-in-one package. They were there. They were sponsoring. I went up to them. I, I I used the product before so I could speak from experience. And I said, hey, I, I like what you're doing. The theory is great. The the, the people are great behind you. Uh, the reputation's solid. But I was just kind of curious that, you know, here you are selling podcasting space, but you don't have a podcasting template. It was a CMS. Right. And the guy looks at me and says, and I quote, Dan, he says, well, do you think we need one? I mean, yeah. You know, so there's a, there's a lot of people, uh, I, I, Paul, as I think you're leading up to not to steal your thunder. I think there's a lot of people providing services or creating software or hosting or whatever for the podcast industry who really don't know anything about podcasting. Yeah. 
And uh, and I think there are there are a whole lot of people who see it as a business opportunity. Yeah. They don't see it as a community. They don't see it as a, as something really cool. They don't see it as a I mean, maybe they see it as those things. But that's secondary to I can make some money here. This yeah. is a place I can go to make some money, maybe some really good money. And you know what they don't have? They don't have this. They need that. That's what they need. But they're not saying this is what they need from the inside. They're saying this is what they need from from the outside, from looking in without that kind of deep understanding of the medium, of what exactly it is that's going on. And yep. that's what's missing in so many of these. I mean, some of the services, and I'm not, I'm not here to, to bash uh, our community or the the companies that that help support it, but so many of those companies that are here, the ones that I hear about, uh, that that I would say the large majority of people are using to host their podcast, a lot of those were are are things that again they might they might not have been built by podcasters, uh, or they might have been built by people who who came from another industry and said I know I know what we need here or I'm going to build something that's great. And so you have, but you have kind of th these holes in, um, in, in these solutions where one might have, might create pretty websites, but it's not really that configurable. You can't do any of the advanced things that you might want to do. And, and, uh, you can't really control what's going on behind the scenes. And in fact, that, that can be harmful to, to you once you get past the five episode point, you know, or when you want to expand, or when you want to do other things. And then you have other systems that might be really, really good at, at serving the files, but they look like they were built in 1990 and there's no improvement there. And the websites they generate can't even be called websites and there's no customization. And, you know, so, I mean, I, I found lots and bits of pieces of things, things were kind of all over the place. And what I found was that most of the people that I talked to or that wrote into podcast method to, to touch the, since you didn't mention it, that's the show I do, uh, helping podcasters. Um, you know, people would write in to that and say, okay, so I'm using this place to host my files yeah. and then I'm going over here to, uh, you know, I have a website on Squarespace. That's where I do the website. And then I generate the, uh, the RSS feed actually over here with this other tool yep. that I kind of use by hand. And so I, I upload the file here first and then I write the post over here and I link to the file in that player. And then I upload it here and that makes the iTunes and I'm using feed burner because I don't trust any of these other services. And what if I want to move later? And right. And, and I'm exhausted and my wife has divorced me because I spend so much time and this is only episode one. Right, yeah. right. They spend an hour recording and then they spend, uh, you know, f an hour editing and then they spend three hours in post-production trying to post the thing and manually adding the the chapter markers, manually adding artwork to it in iTunes, exporting the file back out. And I mean, it's just like the stuff that people were doing was just maddening. And, you know, I have this strong philosophy as a guy who, you know, spent I spent most of my career in software and computers and things like that. That if there's something that you can use a computer to do, by all means, let the computer do that. If right. there's something that you're going to be doing that's essentially the same and you're going to be doing it every day or over and over and over again, take some time and teach the computer to do that thing. Right. And then you will never have to do it again. So a perfect example is, uh, and, and most, most podcast hosting things will do this, but uh, very often, you know, like, like people are adding their own show art to their MP3 file manually. And that's one of the basic things that most podcast CMSs will, will now do for you. But there was a time when they didn't yeah. do that and people are still doing it manually. And it's, it's crazy that you would have to do that on your own when it's super easy to just have a system do that for you. So that's one of many examples, but you know, these little bits and pieces, this one system does this, but it doesn't do this. So I've got another thing to do this. And, and then they'll look at a solution like the one I built and they'll say, oh, well, it's too expensive. I'll say, okay, well, you know, like I understand that everyone has a budget. They'll be like, yeah, cause I'm already paying for, you know, 10 bucks a month for my square. Right. Sites. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like, well, you won't, you wouldn't need that anymore. Oh, well, you know, but then I, I would have my files hosted over here on this thing. Right, but you wouldn't need that anymore. Right. Oh, well, when we also upload to SoundCloud and get a paper, well, you wouldn't need to upload to SoundCloud. <laughs> so, you know. Yep. Yep. No, no, I know. And so you launch and, and I always look at two things when I, when I see a launch, number one, are they going to lock me in? And number two, is the pricing realistic? Because one of the things that's really funny, um, is, is when the industry started, there was this concept that a podcaster shouldn't be, um, 
shouldn't have to pay if they were famous. And I love that concept. And what podcaster 10 years ago didn't want to be famous. But here's the thing. Bandwidth costs money. And if you have a business built on the more successful your client is, the more money you lose, it's not a good plan. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't care who you are. So number one, I look at, is there any longevity? Number two, I, I look at, honestly, is there an, an, an escape route? Um, some companies that should have lasted didn't. Some companies that should not have lasted didn't. You, you know, so is is there a way to escape? Is is there a way to get out? So when you first launched, um, your pricing was, and, and it, well, I won't even say that. During the beta process, um, you know, you floated some different pricing and you had some download minimums and that kind of stuff. And I said, okay. I get what he's doing because bandwidth costs and you were actually doing premium bandwidth and we can chat about that a little bit if you want, you know, but, but I knew the, the, the crowds would go, but I get unlimited bandwidth over at X, Y, and Z. Right. right. And there are several people provide that. And you jumped and said, all right, fine. Unlimited bandwidth. Now I noticed MP3 bandwidth, not MP4 bandwidth. So I appreciate that. But, but still, you know, somebody comes in, somebody can run up a lot more than $19 a month in bandwidth. Yeah, they could, sure. You know, so tell me about why you think it's okay for people to leave and explain a little bit about that you set that up. And then I, I want to talk about the bandwidth issue because that's the one question I've got. And then I want to hear about the future because I think that's where the bandwidth issue um, um, gets answered. But go ahead. Well, I mean, what's your uh, – where do I start? I mean, there, you asked a lot of questions. Yep. So I want to make sure I answer them all. Where, where do you want me to start with that? Well, well like, let's start with bandwidth. I mean, potentially – and and I understand the 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 – marketplace, for lack of a better term, has forced you to offer unlimited bandwidth. But I always get nervous with that one. Um, so you're, you're concerned that because I'm offering unlimited bandwidth, that at some point I'm going to have to start charging for that? No. I'm concerned that if you offer unlimited bandwidth and enough people um, are successful with you, um, you're not going to make any money. Yeah, I mean, there, that's, there's the risk of that. But there are – see, what, what people don't understand – Good. It, when it, the typical podcaster out there, they're going to go looking for something and, and they're going to find a solution that's not going to charge them based on bandwidth or downloads or something like that. And the traditional ways that bandwidth is is calculated and metered, especially if people are familiar with like something like Amazon S3, for example. Uh, I think it's three cents, average three or four cents a gigabyte. In transfer over there. And you say, well, that's not, I'm not doing that much. Well, you know, if you start doing tens of thousands of downloads per month, then that definitely does start to add up. Um, so, and bandwidth is one of those things that if you're serving a lot of content, if you're serving that content, it, you know, some, somebody has to pay, somebody's paying for that somewhere, but bandwidth is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper all the time. And the same way that bandwidth is getting cheaper, um, you know, I think people are, are starting to understand that like the only way that things make sense is if they're not having to pay for it. Like just last month, I went over a little bit on my, uh, my bandwidth usage for my phone. I've got, we've got like four phones on the plan now. And so we went over and it says, well, we're going to charge you another 15 bucks or something like that. And you know, like that's reasonable. I used it, but it, it also seems dumb. It seems dumb and it seems petty in a way. And there's just, sometimes there's just no way around it. Like I'm using the bandwidth, so I've got to pay for it. Well, most podcasters aren't going to get anywhere near, and this is this is the fact, Paul, this is the fact of the matter. Most podcasters are not getting hundreds of thousands of downloads a month. Really? They're just not. Really? Yes, they're just not. And probably most people listening to even your show are probably not getting hundreds of thousands of downloads per month. I, I can tell you that Out of all of the shows that I do, only one gets hundreds of thousands of downloads per month. And the rest of all of the other shows on five by five added up don't, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't come close to that one or maybe, maybe total they would. So the actual cost of bandwidth is a bit less than, than you might imagine it would be. And also there are a whole lot of ways to make that really, really efficient. Uh, so for example, um, you can use, there are lots of CDNs out there that, that are very cost effective. You can also build your own if, if you happen to be like I am, like a, a network administrator, sysadmin type guy who's been working in data centers for 20 years. You know how to set up caching and, and bandwidth in a very effective way so that you can, you can essentially create additional layers of CDN that, that help offset that cost. Now, if somebody like 
you know, you know, everyone talks about a Mark Marin or Serial or one of you know Radio Lab or if if one of those folks signed up, uh, and they're doing millions of downloads a month, well, of course, that the completely different story. But we're not interesting to those people. We're not geared toward those kind of people. We're not geared toward those kinds of podcasts. And that's intentional. That's not the part of the community that I'm interested in serving, and that's not the part of the community that I, I, I I'm interested in supporting. I'm trying to support regular, regular people with regular shows, not the, you know, not the rock star podcast of the universe. That's, that's not for us. And they, I shouldn't be, they should use a completely different platform. Sure. They could use Fireside. No problem. They could, there'd be nothing to, to prevent them from doing that. But they're, if, if they're, if they're that big of a deal and they're getting that many downloads, they're also making a ton of money. And they're probably going to want to go with some kind of completely custom solution, some full on. And that's what every, in my case with five by five shows, that's what I always did. Now I'm slowly moving things to fireside, but you know, it's, they, they have a completely different mentality than, uh, because they're in this sort of up, you know, they're the people who want all, no green M and M's, that kind of thing. And, uh, and, and so I'm not concerned about that, but you're talking about collectively. What if everybody does pretty well? Let's say everybody does moderately well. What what happens? How do I make money? The answer is I'll still make money. Uh, I might make less, but that's okay because I'm doing something that's that's really good for the community. I've built a system that's uh, that that's really helpful that helps people podcast. And the fact of the matter is, for every person that does get a hundred thousand downloads a month, there's a hundred people who get five hundred downloads a month, and and yet they still want a reliable place to host their shows, a beautiful website, a feed, you know, they, they want all those things. And, uh, and you know, they, they want it to be easy. They want it to be easy to use. They want it to be straightforward. They want it to be nice. They want to have fun when they're doing it and they don't want any obstacles. So they're willing to pay 15, 20 bucks a month to get that on well, the person who's paying 20 bucks a month and they have, you know, a hundred thousand downloads. You said, well, they're cheating the system. They're using too much bandwidth. Well, no, it's, you know, that's built in. So, uh, so, that's, so that's you've run the numbers. Approach. Oh yeah. You've run the numbers. Good. Of course. Now you're letting people leave. Um, you've got an exit, you know, if somebody decides I don't want to use you anymore and they want to leave, move their feed to another location, you're making that possible. Why are you doing that? Well, I mean, I'm, I, that's a leading question, obviously, but, uh, but go ahead. Yeah. I mean, be because, well, I mean, that's a, that's just part of the software. Like you'd have to, you have to be able to do that. If you can't do that, then why would anyone ever sign up? Well, there are if, several systems I've worked with, and there are several clients I have had who have been with systems where that was not possible. Um, and yeah, sad. But, that, but that's horrible. Yeah. I can't even I can't even think like that. Well, I I, I appreciate that, but I th I think it needs to be spoken, and I think it needs to be said because um, many of you listening to the show have have signed up with um, you know shiny people in the past who um, it's been impossible to get up and leave. And um, that's, I mean, I would I. I I just can't imagine that. And, and you know, that's because you always want to, you always want to go somewhere. But it's simple. It's simple to do that. It's just a redirect. It's a one time redirect, you know? Yeah. As long as you want that redirect going, you're going to have to like pay because you have to keep the redirect going. But you know, like that, that, that doesn't take very long. Right. You know, and then, and so like one of the things I'll be doing eventually, I haven't built it yet, but is like having a little um, like redirect plan that you can set up and that just redirects you forever. Uh, so that you basically pay like a few bucks a year and it just, the redirector stays there, you know, but yeah, you got to be able to move. You got to be able to get out of there. You what's, what, what's coming in the future other than the one redirect of the big plan? Things, uh, one of the big things that we've been working on is, uh, you know, there's, a lot of the companies out there, they all, they're, they're all talking the big, the big buzzword out there now in, in podcasting is ad insertion Ooh. because everybody's coming to this medium thinking, oh, I'm going to, I got to make money. I'm going to make money. How are we going to make money? It's ads. Okay. How are we going to make money with ads? Well, here's how we're going to make money with ads. And th again, that's the wrong approach. It's the wrong way to think about it. That's the wrong way to go into this. But such a great buzzword, Dan. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like, I just don't like the way that people think about this as an opportunity to just make money 
so they come into it and they say, oh, add insertion. So what does that mean? That means that there's some third party, some invisible third party potentially that will sell ad spots for your show. And you'll say, okay, th there's an ad spot at 20 minutes and 10 seconds. There's an ad spot at 42 minutes and 18 seconds. And just ads will just be inserted dynamically into your show. You don't know what they are. They're not in your voice. They're commercials. And, uh, and, and those things will just show up in your show. You'll have no say, input, or control over what they really sound like. Uh, maybe you will have some. And these things will go out and they'll, and they'll be, some, sometimes it's dynamic ad insertion so that if you're in one region, an ad for that region will go into the show. If you're in another region, a different ad will go into the show. And maybe these ads are changing all the time. So if somebody downloads a show in October, they hear one ad and in November, they hear another ad. But the thing is, these are not good ads. These are not the kinds of ads anyone wants to listen to. And these are not the kind of ads anyone wants to have in their own podcast. I don't want to let any ad that was dynamically inserted. I guarantee you, Paul, I don't want to hear it. If it was dynamically inserted, I'm fast forwarding through it. I'm skipping 30 seconds and I'm skipping 30 seconds. I, I promise you. And I promise you that's what everybody's going to do. Very different from like me and Merlin talking about how much we like our Casper mattresses and you going to buy one. Very different. And, you know, so that's not something that I'm focusing on because what I see a big part of the future, I see, I still think ads will play a role, but I think there's two other aspects that will come into, into the space in podcasting. One of them is member support. More and more I see people who are making a living doing shows that exist because their members are supporting them. They are, they are donating, whether it's a dollar, $10, $20 a month, whatever. So Patreon making, is the existing big name in that space right now. They're the only name, really. I think Memberful, some people have, have customized Memberful, and I know the guy who, who, who built Memberful. Uh, it's a lot more work. Patreon's easy to just take people's money. Uh, but there's nothing, that, that there's not a deep enough integration. And to have really deep integration, the kind of integration where you can say, okay, this episode I'm putting out right here, um, you know what, release it to my supported, my supporting members for a week and then release it to the rest of the world. And then you just, you don't have to do anything else. It just does that. Or giving a special feed, custom feed for every single supporting member so they get different things based on their level. Uh, and if they stop supporting you, the feed stops working. Things like that, little things like that. I think, I think that's pretty cool. I think something like that is is a game changer for a lot of people. And then uh, I also I'm I'm also interested in uh in in the idea of people paying for content, paying for the kinds of content that they want. I'm not sure what that's going to look like, but I pay for Netflix and I pay for HBO Go and YouTube Red and Spotify. And that's because I like the content that's coming out of those places. And, and I want to get that content and I want to support directly the content that's coming out of them. And, and I think there's something interesting there. I don't know exactly what that looks like. Uh, but as far as like specific features, uh, you know, like people have asked about multi-user stuff. They want to be able to have, you know, a producer log in and co-host log in. So obviously we're, we're doing that kind of stuff. Um, that's in the very near future. There's, there's a whole lot that we're working on. And, and I share this a lot with the people who are, uh, customers in the Slack. So, you know, I'm, I'm in Slack all day so people can come in and, and talk to me, ask me questions or tell me what they want. Someone today suggested, uh, that they, there's uh, multiple kinds of file uploads so that they can upload, uh, you know, like they, they will not be able to upload an image and that shows up in on their page in addition to the header image and the artwork. So, you know, we'll work something like that up. People have had great suggestions, like they want a transcript. So they, now we allow for the uploading of transcripts. Um, you know, we, we, we really, I try really hard to respond to what people are asking me for. I try to listen hard to the problems that they might be having or the wishes that they have and, and try to respond to that. Is there a decision, you know, you spoke earlier to people who are going, oh, there's good money in this podcasting space. I'm going to get yeah. some of that. Is is there a decision at this point, you know, um, um, Patreon takes, uh, take the action. Um, I don't know if Memberful does. I'm not uh, familiar enough with them, but that seems to be the, the model for a, a lot of people. Um, other hosting companies in the podcasting space who have premium opportunities um, charge, you know, up to up to 50% for that. Um, do you have a, a model? How are you going to play there? Are you still examining it? What's, what's your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I'm still looking at that. I'm still, um, I'm still experimenting. Um, you know, I pay attention to everything. I look around at everything, and uh, and 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 so certainly, you know, again, I'm I'm interested to hear what the existing users uh, like and what the existing users are are wanting to do because they're they're helping build this too, you know, and uh, and I don't want to waste my time trying to build something that that no one's interested in or that no one's going to use. And I definitely don't have that philosophy of uh, well, I'm going to tell them what they want. I mean, in some cases, I do know, you know, pretty well what what people want or what they're going to need. But a lot of the time, I spend just listening and uh, and seeing where the pain points are for people or what the features are that people want. And and then typically, you know, what people want is pretty pretty easy, and I can just go and go and add it. A lot of the features that we have really did just come out of people in the chat room talking. So, what's the staying power? Why is this one going to survive? Uh, you know. It's hard to answer a question like that, Paul, but what I think is, you know, from my standpoint, I've been doing this now full part-time since 2006, full-time since 2009. And at five by five over the years, we've had many, many shows, you know, probably we do. Yeah. (laughs) We probably do about 20, 20, 25 shows right now. We're working with a lot of different hosts and, and I built five by five CMS from the ground up. And use that as the basis to start building Fireside. And all of this came from my own experience and what to do. And one of the things that I learned in many years in, you know, working in system administration and uh, and building data centers and things like that is how to scale something. And the way that this system works, the way that it's designed is uh, it costs less if I have few customers and costs more if I have more customers. But what that basically means is that our our cost to run it is is always less than the cost uh, uh, that we're or how much we're charging, in other words. so there's a there's a built-in ability to make profit, which is important as a business. But it's designed in such a way so that you know you never it w- we'll, we'll, we will never have more costs. Uh, than or expenses than we have income. and And what that means is it's always going to be something that uh, that that can exist financially. If we only had five customers, our bill would be very, very low, and we'd be able to run fine with just five customers. What if about we had, paying all the VCs? You know, all the people invested money into this, you know, yeah, of your, course, the obligation of course. to the, to the, to the shareholders. Yes, of course I boot, I bootstrap, bootstrap the whole thing myself. It's, uh, it's all my own time and money and there's no investment. There's nothing from, I mean, I invested a lot of time and money in it, uh, but it's all been my own personal time and personal money from my own personal bank account, uh, to, to pay for, you know, the people who have helped me build it or design or whatever. And a considerable amount of my own time and tons of missed opportunities that I could have had to do shows and make money, for example, uh, or other things. But it's something I believe in. And I'm passionate about our community. I'm passionate about building a tool and a system that's going to be around for a long time. Uh, and I'm I'm using it. And I believe in it. And it's here It's here to stay. So, you know, that's been my, my biggest focus. And I, I appreciate all the people who have taken that leap of faith to say, I'll, I'll try it. I'll come out there and, and hundreds of hundreds of people are using the system and that makes me very, very happy. And I wish, uh, I, you know, I, I, I wish to thank them publicly for that. And I want to continue to make it great, continue to listen to them and, and build the features that they're asking for and continue to make it better. And, you know, I think the fact that, uh, they understand very carefully what the relationship is. They understand like they're paying for this service. They know exactly what they're getting. And, um, you know, and it, and it keeps things straightforward. It keeps things honest and, uh, and simple. And, uh, you know, it's something that I'm passionate about. I love writing code. I love, uh, messing around with things, building things. And I found that if I have something to work on that I enjoy that, that kind of desire to tinker and, and experiment and play, uh, it, it, it turns into something that's, that's more valuable to people in general. And that's, that's my goal. There was this moment, I don't know if you listened to Startup on Gimlet, but there was a moment at the end of season one when, um, and, and I've appreciated Bloomberg's um, open nature to the show and whatnot, but he says, well, good news is $1.5 million in revenue. And everybody's listening, the mouth drops and everybody's excited and wow, look at this. And then he goes, bad news is $1.6 million in expenses. Wow. <laughs> we got to start selling t-shirts. And yeah. uh 
<laughs> you know, and, and, and here's a guy with one five who, 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 who can't figure out how to make that be enough. Um, right. And I think part of, of, you know, you came from the world of server administration, but we have the cloud now. You know, it's not like you've got a data center here that you got to pay for anymore. Right. Um, exactly. You got to pay a little bit per person, but that's okay because that person's paying you more anyway. So you just take a right. piece of that, which is you know, it, good business. It's it's like Amazon S3 has been wonderful because before Amazon S3, we had to have a server in a data center and we had to have that server um, backed up, which, of course, you still have. But all those files on the server, like if if that server went down the you have to restore from the backup or you have to have a failover machine that's getting some kind of cl- Amazon S3 makes it so that those files live on Amazon and they that we still back it up but it, those files exist there in a way that's essentially indestructible half the internet could go down and go away and those files still exist so you know that's a, that's a wonderful thing in there but there are still people who like serve their files directly from S3 they don't do any kind of caching in front of it and and that's just madness because you're paying for every single transfer see and this is this is where understanding how this stuff works is much better so here here's a here's a and, quick, and understanding quick, it from from not a a nerd standpoint, although, you know, you and I both embrace that quality, but, but you actually sure. understand it from experience of actually doing a show that has hundreds of thousands of downloads where sure. the bandwidth cost means something. Right. So it, it, think of it like this. There are plenty of hosting companies out there that charge less for bandwidth than Amazon uh, S3 does or where they come with enough built in bandwidth that they're not going to that that you know that that it winds up being a lot cheaper you can run it's what's essentially the same thing that a cdn does on a on a much smaller scale you can put a server that essentially is a miniature cdn what we call a caching server and the the way that that works is so let's say let's say people go to download this episode if you're serving it from s3 let's say Every single person who downloads it has to download it from s3 and s3 has to serve it every single time to those people and you're getting charged three cents per gigabyte for that. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up. But if you're smart, you put some kind of caching server in front of it somewhere on the internet where bandwidth is less expensive. And then you tell it, you give it lots of storage space, and you say, you know what? Every time that you download uh, a file, save it, and save it for 30 days. And the only time you should ever delete something is if you start to run out of disk space, but don't worry because you've got terabytes and if you do wind up running out of disk space, no big deal. Get uh, purge the purge the oldest file that you have that's been the least requested. Yeah. So what that means is now instead of downloading it from Amazon S3 every time someone wants to download it, it downloads once and then that server serves it for you. This is the principle behind a CDN everywhere. And if you if you have a few of those servers around the country and you send or around the world and you send people to the server that's geographically closest to them, which your DNS server can help them figure out, well, you've built your own CDN, haven't you? So that's th- these principles are there to help you know, cut costs and things like that. And, and so like, that's the kind of thing that I really enjoy. Like I enjoyed figuring out like, what's the best solution to do this? How can we make this faster and easier and more fun? And, you know, you, you can tell that we're at the top of the hour. I got to let you go. I actually got to get an interview for another episode of this, but it won't be as good as this one. Oh, it won't be. It won't be. And, and I want, what I want everybody to take home is just simply, yep. It's another host. Yep. He's priced like everybody else. Yep. We don't know. However, um, the pedigree here is definitely worth a look. Um, and, and, and maybe for as many of you need to look at Fireside, maybe you need to look at 5x5 five five and see what's happening over there because it's really interesting. And it's been around for a while and he's got some, some, some legs. I think we need some new thoughts. I think we need some new ideas. I've been preaching forever that this little hodgepodge cafeteria style of, of, of podcasting is, is doing no one good. And um, Dan here has an opportunity that I'm excited by conceptually. Um, it's going to be a little while before I can, I, I, I can embrace it fully, but, but on this show, this is what we talk about. And I'm, I'm thrilled to have you on here, Dan, give us a, give us a final close, just something to think about. Not necessarily much a sale, but it's just, just who's Dan and why is this thing so dang different? Uh, you know, I'm, my name is Dan Benjamin. Thanks for having me uh, here. It's my first time on the show. Uh, no, you know, I mean, I've been doing podcasting stuff for, for a long time. And, uh, this is something I care a lot about. You know, I got into this back before there was an, uh, before iTunes had podcasts in it. 
back before, you know, like in the audio uh, time period. And just doing a podcast, that was, that was a weird thing to be doing. It was a crazy thing to be doing. And, uh, but I always wanted to be in radio, you know, and I remember back when I was, uh, I would, I would sit in junior high and high school and I had a little pocket radio and I'd have the earphone, uh, going up inside my jacket up into my ear and I'd be sitting in the back of the room listening to the local talk show host, you know, and, uh, I loved it. I knew that was what I wanted to do. But when I got into college, I was a communications major and what we used to call, um, RTV, which is now RTF, but radio television. And I was talking to the, num the number one radio guy in, uh, in the town I was going to, to school in. And I said, yeah, this is what I want to do. He said, listen, he said, I know you hear people like me and you think this is awesome. You know, I'm going to do what Phil does, but he's like, it's a miserable job. It's, it's a working in a radio station is horrible. You get fired all the time. You have to quit all the time. You have to move around the country. You get terrible hours. You don't make as much, you don't make that much money. And he's like, you know, it, it, it's, it, it kind of sucks. And I was really discouraged by that. And he's like, is there anything else that you do? And I'm like, well, I do computers. You know, I've been doing computers since I was 10 in 1982. He's like, what? I said, yeah. He's like, you're good at computers? And this is back when like working a computer was like, I can work a computer, you know, like yep. that was special. And, uh, and he said, well, oh my God, do that. And I took it seriously and he wasn't the only person that was telling me that. And I said, all right, fine. Like I'll do that since it's easy for me. But I never got rid of that bug of just of loving, loving the medium, loving the, the concept of talk radio, always wanting to do it. And so finally, when I got to the point where, um, where I was, I guess I was, uh, having a, uh, pre midlife career crisis, I was CT, my dream of being CTO of a Silicon Valley startup was there. Like I was that. And I hated it. And I, I was, I didn't like what I was doing and I wanted to do something else. And I, I remember reading an article, I've told this story many times, but I was reading an article about Leo Laporte and Twit and that they were doing one and a half million dollars in revenue uh, per year. They didn't talk about profit. They just said revenue. And I thought, wow, you know, if, if he can do a million and a half in revenue, I could probably like pay my mortgage, right, do a car right, payment, yep, yep. you know, like I could probably find a way to do that. And, you know, Leo, of course, had come from broadcasting to technology and I was coming from essentially technology to broadcasting. And I thought, okay, well, he's got the advantage because he's, he's such a good broadcaster, but if I can be a halfway decent broadcaster and I bring this technology knowledge and all the industry contacts and the friends and the people there, uh, why hopefully I could, I could be able to pay my bills. And I, I, I certainly did. And it grew into five by five and many shows. And many of those people have gone on to do other shows and yeah. So that's kind of the story. And, uh, Very and cool. here we are. Very cool, Dan. Well, people are going to check I out. Give, I want to give you, I want to give your uh, listeners a discount or something. Ooh, 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 go for it. So what's This is the podcast report, right? Yep. So what do you want the code to be? Podcast, podcast report. Sure. Okay, one word, podcast report. So they can go and uh, go to, when they sign up for Fireside, they're going to get their first week free anyway. But they'll get, how about this, 20% off for three months. There we go. Deal. So that's it, podcast <laughs> right. report. And we'll put the links. It's it's going to be the podcastreport.com forward slash episode 118 or, or just the podcastreport.com forward slash 118 for this one. Uh, by not nice. having a network, I don't have to have the slash B2W and that type of thing. Thank right. you, Dan. I could go on a long time with this, and maybe we'll 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 have you here in the future. I've got another guy pinging me on Skype right now for for his interview for this. But um, busy, busy. You represent where we need to go, and um, only time's going to tell whether or not if you're going to pull this one off. But I, I don't know. I kind of feel you're gonna, and uh, that's why I brought I, you on I the show. I have to, Paul. I have <laughs> no choice. I have to. You know, we'll thanks close. for having me. Thanks, Dan. 